I was not a very good student when I was very young. Uh, I like to show my students my report cards. And all the way up and through fourth, fifth grade, uh, my best grades were Ds. Um, I started to realize I was better at it when I was in middle school and high school. I didn't like my classes very much. Um, it was very boring. I sat in my chair quite often just writing. I'm David Schick. Uh, I've been teaching math for 29 years now. This is year number 30. Um, it's a lot of fun. I had a college professor that had a big impact on me. He was my role model. His name was Kent Browninger. Um, it was at a community college in Washington State. And he just looked like he was having fun every day and he made class fun. And I thought, yeah, I'd like to do that. I would like to do what he does for a living. Math, um, I personally very like math, but I'm not good at math. Oh, I think um, math is really boring, but it's fine. My teaching philosophy and teaching math, uh, I think the most important thing is that students feel like they're cared about, that they're interested in by their teachers. Um, I think it's important they have some freedom and some uh, some choice, some power to choose what they're going to do and how they're going to do it to learn. And it's got to be fun. Things have to be fun. I think, I think freedom and spontaneity and power. Uh, our students need power to choose activities at times, which direction is best for them. For instance, the activity we're going to do this week, students will have a choice to do it by themselves or with a partner. You know, they can work with a group and that's okay. Um, for some students, they don't need that, but other people need human interaction depending on their personality. So the activity we're going to be doing is called a scavenger hunt. First and compositive functions. Is that cool? You're welcome to work by yourself out there. You're welcome to work with a partner. Let's hit it. Let's get her done. They get to move around. I usually give them a clipboard and they write on the clipboard as they're moving place place. It gives them the power to choose who they want to work with. They get to choose which problem they start on. They can do it by themselves. They can do it with a partner. Um, they can do it with a gang of three people if they want and talk about it. I like it when students talk to each other about the problem solving and, and I find that they learn from each other quite a bit more than me just standing in front of the room talking and trying to explain I mean, problems. Point P is for and so what we do to make it a scavenger hunt is kids get individual problems. There will be, I think, 16 total problems. Now these problems are on pieces of paper that are not in front of them. They're around the perimeter of the room. And this today, in this case, they'll be outside in the hallway and they'll be up on the walls. They have to solve the problem. When they get an answer, they have to go find that answer on another piece of paper. When they find the answer, they get a new problem. If they can't find the answer, that means they've made a mistake and they have to go back and go figure out what they did wrong. And then, but when they find the answer, it tells them which problem to do next. So there's a chain or an order of problems to do. But, you know, and it just lets them work at their own pace as well. Some students will go faster. When I get a student who gets everything done rather quickly, I can have extra challenge problems for that particular student so they can kind of go at their own pace. I really like doing scavenger hunts as it helps me learn. It's also like fun. I think it makes math like more engaging for us uh, to do and it also helps me to understand the things we are learning better.